Welcome to Books to Boardrooms with Dr. Kiran. Uh, today I have Ms. Andrada Thavan. Uh, she is the general manager at Algure Retail. Uh, welcome, Andrada. Thanks a lot for coming. I just want you to introduce yourself, a little background about yourself, mm -hmm. and uh, what does the Algure Retail does in UAE market. Well, thank you first of all, Dr. Kiran, for having me here. It's such a pleasure to be talking to you today. And let me congratulate you first of all for this beautiful, amazing initiative that you have thank that you. actually brings a real corporate life to the students who are about to graduate and enter the corporate world themselves and as well for the colleagues and peers in the industry who can always learn from each other. I think that's the purpose. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me over today. Um, well, for me, Dubai has been home for 25 years now. And um, this is pretty much where I've built my life, my career, my family. So I'm very grateful and thankful to be uh, in Dubai and to have seen it grow in front of my eyes. Uh, retail in Dubai, of course, is very exciting and very challenging at the same time. It is one of the most important retail destinations today in the world. And for me, of course, I have had the privilege of working with some of the best brands in the industry and some amazing organizations that have allowed me to learn, experiment, and uh, evolve at the same time as a professional. Um, at the moment, I'm working with Algorair Retail, uh, which is part of Algorair Investments. Algorair obviously comes with a lot of legacy. We are the pioneers of many firsts here in the UAE. Uh, it's one of the largest uh, diversified family-owned businesses with many uh, business interests but at the same time a very purpose-led organization that believes to enhance life and enhance life not just for the stakeholders of the organization but as well for the customers, the people who work with us and the community in general. So when you say Algorair Retail, so what are the firms which comes under Algorair Retail? Algorair Retail is a part of the Algorair Ventures which is part of the Algorair Investments. Uh, at the moment, we manage two brands. One is Springfield, which is Spanish urban ready-to-wear brand centered around sustainability. Uh, the other brand is a beauty brand. It's a Korean beauty brand that comes from LG Group's beauty division, uh, centered again around naturalism. So when I said enhanced life, uh, even the selection of the brands that we have are with that purpose in mind. So you are the general manager of so can you just throw some light on, as a general manager, what are your key responsibilities when it comes to these two brands? Well, as a general manager, the 360 responsibility lies with me, which is very interesting because I'm leading the transformation and turnaround of the retail business from front. Um, as a business, of course, uh, we always look for brands and businesses that add to the purpose that the organization believes very strongly in. Uh, apart from managing Springfield and the Face Shop, which are the two main brands in the portfolio, I'm also looking at adding more unique brands to the portfolio that will then also add to the purpose that we enhance life. So when you say, okay, of course, 360, that means it covers every aspect of the business. Now let's take the Springfield, right? Uh, so what are the, uh, who are the target customers? There are so many fashion brands in the UAE market. Uh, so, how do you differentiate uh, Springfield from other fashion brands? The main point of differentiation, Dr. Kiran, for us, of course, is our message of sustainability. The brand has sustainability at its heart, and that is our point of differentiation for the customers. The reason and the purpose why they should come and shop with us. So, is the same thing with the, the, other, the, the, the face shop also? Face shop is a Korean beauty brand that is also focused on naturalism. Mm. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are a purpose-led organization. So both our brands actually differentiate themselves from the reason that we give to the customers to come and shop with us. The purpose that we believe in as a retail unit is better for the planet, better for you. So both of the brands actually add not just to your life, but overall as a betterment for the planet as well. So when you say the betterment of the planet, I think it's all talking about sustainability. And today sustainability is the key. I mean, every organization need to be green, sustainable. So tell me in a fashion brand, uh, how you maintain that sustainability? Does it mean sourcing or manufacture the material used is sustainable? Or so how you define sustainability in the DNA of these two brands which you are uh, promoting in this region? 
But sustainability is not just a trend anymore, Dr. Kiran. Sustainability is becoming more and more a way of life. For us, sustainability has not just been one of the things that we do in Springfield. Uh, the brand actually is centered around sustainability, which means everything that we do, the first thought is how we can make it more sustainable. From the materials that we source to the techniques that we use in our manufacturing, and also to the store designs that we have and how we engage our customers in the overall sustainability drive that we have. The manufacturing process uses a lot of techniques that actually are planet friendly, which means that we use less energy, less water, less chemicals. And that also enhances the quality of our products while of course they make it more sustainable. And the materials that we source are also responsibly sourced. So the materials are more or less planet friendly and they are mostly natural. One of the uh, main materials that we use in our products is organic cotton. Organic cotton, of course, is sourced organically, which means that there are no chemical fertilizers that are used. And of course, there is way less water that is used as well. Um, we also have a denim collection, which is uh, using EcoWash technology. EcoWash is a technology that uses way less water than the traditional denims do. Denims are actually supposed to be one of uh, the most water consuming uh, garments or materials in the fashion industry. And for us, we are one of the very few brands that are actually using this eco wash technology that uses ozone and laser to reduce the consumption of water in the washes that we use. So it's, it's quite a lot of uh, what you call facts, factors involved in, in your product. How you communicate this to the, the customers? Because sometimes, you know, one of the trend in, you see in this market is people go and buy when there's a sale. Uh, and in the sale, it's only the price what matter, the color or the, or, the, or the design matters. But these are most important. There are a lot of customers, especially the Gen Z and millennials give more importance to uh, the environment. So how you incorporate these sustainable factors in your communication to the customers? The customers today, Dr. Kiran, are becoming more and more aware of their impact on the planet. And I believe sustainability, as I said earlier, is not just a trend anymore. I believe it is becoming a way of life. Uh, particularly after COVID, people have taken a step back and realized that they need to be more conscious of the choices that they make. Of course, from a brand's perspective, we are trying to get this message out. And my conversation today perhaps will be one of those messages that go out to the consumers as well. Apart from that, in our stores, we have messages that actually inform the customers of our sustainability drive and how each of the garments or the collections that we have are more sustainable. Our marketing communication also centers around sustainability messages, which include how we source our garments, what kind of materials we are using, and how the garments are better for the planet and better for the customers. So that's really important and that's really great. So when you say you communicate to the customer, so what are the common channels which you use? I know uh, somebody coming to your shop, yes, you have proper display or that's the right. communication is there. But to drive people in or let the customer know that Springfield is known for sustainability uh, or the clothes are sustainable. So what sort of mediums would you use uh, to communicate to the customers? These days, of course, digital media is the strongest channel of communication. Everybody is on their phones and Instagram, social media, Facebook, all of the digital channels and social media are the key channels that most of the brands are using. Uh, we go the same way. Uh, most of our marketing spend and focus is around digital and social media. Apart from that, we also create customer engagement events at our stores where we will invite our customers to come and engage with us. We recently had a store opening event at our new store in city center, Mirdiv, where we had a small tree planting activity, which actually got the customers engaged with us and, of course, communicated the message of sustainability to them by having them plant their own trees and take them back home with them along with the products that they shopped. I think that's a great initiative. I think educating some customer the importance of sustainability is very important and, and, and I'd like to thank you for uh, you know, doing such initiatives in your in your store. So that comes to the, the face shop brand and you know and this part of the world you know there are dedicated uh, uh, the brands which a lot of customers are looking for. Yeah. 
So what are the various categories of products uh, in both your face shop as Springfield, UK? Is it like specifically to any gender, age group or can you just throw some light on your product category? Well, our products are for everyone. Um, even though we say that you cannot do everything for everyone. However, the products that we do in Springfield, we cater to both men and women of all ages. Uh, particularly also because our garments are quite seasonless and they are made to last. These are not garments that are very focused on just the latest trends. They are basic garments that become your core staple wardrobe. Anyone can have them in their wardrobe, irrespective of the age that they come from. Also, the face shop, being a beauty brand, does not only cater to women. Men have all the right to look good as well. We have products that are not gender specific, basic moisturizers, sunscreens, hair products, and of course, fragrances and body products as well that allow you to take care of yourself. So in um, the face shop as well, we have a very wide range of products starting from everything that a beauty care routine requires. And how you position your brand? I mean, in terms of, you know, in this market, there are uh, price busters, there are mid-market brands, there are premium brands. So where do you position both Springfield and uh, the face? We have actually varied price points as well that also allow us to cater to a wider base of customers. The brands are primarily accessible. We do not cater or position ourselves as luxury brands. They are accessible brands that I believe every customer should be able to afford. So it's quality or the value for money brands. Absolutely. The products allow you to get the best quality at a price that you don't mind paying for. These are two different categories, right? One is fashion and one is beauty. Uh, so you being the GM, how challenging it is to manage or understand the, the nuances of these two businesses. So how you manage, what are the key challenges you face in, in both because they are two different categories of product and how you manage those challenges? Well, I wouldn't say that they're very different to each other because everybody likes to look good and to look good you need to take care of your beauty and self-care routine as well as dress well. So I believe we are taking care of both of these basic needs of a consumer. And uh, the customer base that we have, I believe will more or less be very similar because as I said earlier, the products that we have are quite accessible and they cater to both men and women and at any age. Even in the face shop, we have products that cater to younger customers, teenagers who may have a problem skin, as well as to women or men who are getting into aging concerns and it takes care of that too. In Springfield as well, we have uh, collections that cater to younger uh, teenage generation and at the same time we have products that can be worn by anyone in their 50s or 60s or way beyond because it will make you look good no matter what age you're at. So if a customer want to buy the products, so from where all they can buy the product? What are the outlets which uh, uh, you have online, you have offline? Where are the locations? Can you just throw some light on that? Of course, for the face shop, we already have our own e-commerce website. The customers can very comfortably shop online, as well as we have stores in most of the key malls here in Dubai and the rest of the Emirates in UAE. For Springfield as well, we have stores already in most of the key malls and we are ready to launch our e-commerce website as well very soon. So you are, that's, that's more like an expansion plan, the growth strategies. That's right, So, So apart from increasing the channel for growth, do you have any other growth strategies in terms of uh, going to a new market or getting a new category of, or a new category of products or brands in this ecosystem? Definitely new brands are in the pipeline, so that's more exciting news coming in later. We are looking at developing and building our portfolio further and of course looking at brands that will serve the purpose of enhancing life of our customers. So definitely in the pipeline in the future. In regards to more distribution channels, of course, both of these brands, since they cater to a wider audience, we're looking at other distribution channels as well. So when you say other distribution channel means, are you going to uh, shops who do multi-brand retailing? That's right, okay. yes. For uh, beauty, we know that there are a lot of multi-brand department stores uh, that women and men normally would want to sh go shop at because it allows them a wider choice of brands. So we are looking at that distribution channel for the face shop and for Springfield as well in e-commerce marketplaces 
that allow them to be able to compare various brands and for us to position ourselves amongst our competitors as well. And one last question, you know, because as I told you, this, this market, people look at sales and offers and stuff like that. So how often uh, your brands does these type of offers and what are the common offers which you, you think is working very well for Springfield and the Pepe shop? Actually, for Springfield, as I mentioned earlier, the price points are already quite accessible. We are not a promotion-driven brand. Uh, however, at the same time, when the customers visit our stores, they will be able to find some offers that allow them to buy multiple products as a bundle offer. One of the products that we sell very well are our polo t-shirts and those are always available on a bundle because they're basic products and when you go in and shop for t-shirts you don't mind buying two or three together to build your staple wardrobe. Uh, similarly for women as well, we always have some bundle offers going on where you can buy a few products together and pay a fixed amount. So those are the kind of offers that we normally have rather than percentage discounts all along the year which many brands do. Uh, personally, I believe that dilutes the brand equity because the customer stops trusting your pricing. It's always better to price your brand accessibly, uh, keeping the customer perception in mind with the value of your product in mind as well. And when you do that, the customers these days are very smart. They know what they're paying for. And if the quality of the product demands the price that you're asking for, the customer does have the willingness to pay for it. I think that's come back to the same, if the customer feels this value for money, that's, that's it. it doesn't matter whether it's an offer or not that's offer. It. So how you offer that value for money or give the perception to the customer that yes, it's value for money is one of the key. Absolutely. So because the last question, because we came to the customer points, how you retain your customer? Do you have any customer retention uh, schemes or loyalty programs? Or, so what is your customer retention strategy? We have our own loyalty program, which is called Hadiya. Uh, the loyalty program offers rewards to the customers as points every time they shop in our stores and these points can be redeemed at Springfield or in Face Shop. Of course that allows us to have customer data which allows us also to be able to engage our customers frequently with promotions, offers, announcing our new products to them and they get special privileges for being part of our loyalty program. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Andra, for giving a full journey about the, the, all the four P's of marketing, uh, customer value creation, uh, customer retention. Uh, it's wonderful talking to you and I'm sure most of the information what you provided uh, can be a good case study for people to relate to a lot of other brands. And uh, thanks a lot for your valuable time. Thanks for coming. It has been a pleasure, Dr. Kiran. It was such an honor speaking to you today and I have enjoyed my time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you very uh, thank much. Thank you. See you. Thank you very much. Bye.